Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 which is going to be a very short video because what I want to do is I want to remove this download button and the send button and then I want to place this print button to be print slash download because I've resigned to the fact that it's going to be quite difficult to get a package which is going to handle this download and the send as well because for the send what I want to do is I want to be able to access the I want to be able to access the client email and then attach the PDF file inside the email, okay? And I've not been able to convert this into a PDF file, so technically I can't still do this yet. And then another thing, another solution to that would be that I create a, a custom link, which is going to link back to the invoice that you create, which is also what Figma does, and I wanted to do something similar to that. So I'm going to just change it, check it out. But for this video, I just want to change this into print slash download. And then I want to remove this. I want to remove all the initial values that we had set up. And then I want to change our show invest state value back to false. So that by default, you're going to be on the form, right? And then something else that I did want to do is that I want to display the form on the left and then the invoice on the right so that we don't, we don't have to keep on having this preview invoice and edit information. So switching back and forth. I don't want to do that, right? So I think probably I'm just going to do the one thing, the print slash download in this video. And then probably in the next video, then I'm going to do the side by side information because I think that would be much better really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over into app.js. And what I have is that I'm already running my server first of all on localhost 3000. That's how I'm able to do this. We're going to use a package called react to print to handle our print dialogue. Okay, and I have a reason for that because let me show you. So if I click on the print button, then obviously it brings this up, right? But notice how it still shows the time and the title on top and the, the website and the page number right here at the bottom. So, and it also shows the kind of a box shadow that we have on our invoice. Now, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be able to do that. Instead, I only want the component, which is this right here. I only want to print the component without all this on the outside, right? So using that package, we only we are going to be able to do that and we're just going to be able to save it as PDF right there. So let's go ahead and in our terminal using control and J. So I'm going to say npm install react to print and let this run. And then at the top of this, so at the top right here, I'm going to say import react to print from react to print which should be installing okay and then right around here and actually let me talk about this package just a bit so this is the home page of the package and if you go down right here this is the installation and then these are the this is the api react to print component it takes in all of these props and you can read all the descriptions here but i don't want to do that and then you can use it in class components let me see so in class components here or this one this example or this example it has multiple use cases but because we're using a functional component, I'm going to be using this, which takes in the use ref hook, or you can use the use react to print custom hook, which they have inside, but I'm not going to use this one. Instead, I'm going to just use this one. Now, I've tested all the use cases just to make sure that they all work. I mean, obviously, they would work because why else would they be in the NPM registry, right? But then take note that it has an issue here where in TypeScript, it says that if you encounter this error, then all you have to do is initialize use ref with null okay so right here instead of just setting this to empty brackets then you have to use you have to set it to null which is what they recommend right here that is if you're using typescript but we are not using typescript and we are using javascript right so let's continue let's continue and i'm going i want to render my component here so right before i show you what say i want to say react to print our component is going to be our component right so the react to print component takes in a trigger probe, which calls our button to print out our component, right? And then it also has a content probe, which just references the components that you want to print right here, okay? And we need to initialize all of this using the user ref hook. So the first thing that we need to do is at the top, actually, I should have done this first. We're going to say import user ref from react, right? And then right below this, below our use states, then I'm going to say const component ref equals to use ref like so okay and then right inside here 
inside our print then i'm going to call the trigger prop so trigger which is an inline function which returns a button okay so button and then this button is going to say print slash download like so and then it also takes in another prop called content like so and content is going to say component ref dot current okay which is basically this right here and then now the component that i want to print is this div right here so this div which houses the header all the way to the bottom right here right so i'm going to pass in my ref here and i'm going to say ref equals to component ref which comes from our initialization right here so this should work correctly so let me test this out so let me save this and then let's go into our application let's reload this so that our print should appear right around here or here rather so print download so let's click on this and we're going to have this now notice we can already tell the difference that now it's only printing the component right so another thing that i do want to do is i want to remove this button from here right so let's go to the bottom and let me grab this button and just place it outside and of course the error that we get here is because we are trying to return two items so we have a div and a button yet we can only return one item so i'm going to grab all of this all the way to the top right here okay and i'm going to cut it out and i'm going to turn a fragment and then i'm going to paste this in and that should fix the error so let's save this and let's see where this is going to go reload this i want to see where this button goes should be outside of the invoice right around here is it or not let me see where the print whether the print is going to show so the print now our print statement doesn't show our button which is technically what we want and then let me go inside our header component and let me remove these two buttons so inside our header js let me go inside header js and and actually you know what i think i can disable this entire div because we don't need any of these three anymore and then we only need the print download right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this class name which is this right here so copy this and then inside our app.js right inside our button to print right inside this button then i'm just going to paste this in so that this is going to be blue and there we go so that we're going to have this and then let me just add a margin on the bottom does it have a margin it doesn't have a margin so margin bottom let's say five to push it down us from this there we go so we're going to have this and we can say print download and it opens out up our dialog and we're going to have this so this is looking much better but technically notice how it is squeezed to the edge right that's because it's grabbing the styles from this div yet we place the margin and the padding on our main component here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a class name of this div give this a class name of padding all round of five okay which will push this inwards once again so let me print and download and we should see that so this is looking much much better right now the next thing that i do, I do want to do before i forget because i forgot it in the last video is if we go into our invoice we were able to add empty items now i don't want to do this right so let's go into where was it it should be table form let me see table form right here right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to press an if statement right and i'm going to say my if statement is here and then we're going to have an else statement and the else statement is going to grab this entire thing right here where is it this one push it downwards into the else statement right so for the if statement we're going to be checking if there is no description so if description is empty description or we are checking if there is no quantity so if quantity is empty or we are checking price is empty or we are checking oh sorry don't need to check for the amount actually because the amount is going to come from quantity and price so if all of this is empty then we just want to say a lot and we're going to say please fill in all inputs like so probably we should have a better a lot than this or a better kind of error handling than this but this is going to work for now and probably i should change this into truthy ants because it would be much better right because this would evaluate to true if any of this evaluate to true 
and actually you no know let's just test it out test it out to see whether we're going to have a bug so let me add a description here and let's add item okay so please fill in all inputs let's say equal to 45 and see that now we have that kind of error which we do not want hmm how do we fix that so let's say let's change this into put the answer let me see if this is going to fix it add item okay so we can add we can add more items okay so truth the ends are going to work so this is going to be much better and we are not going to able oh no oh no there's still an error there is still an error let's see let's see let's see let's see this error We are still we can still add empty inputs which i don't want to do right ah uh, you know what it's because of this what is this it's because of the double um the double i didn't even catch that the double exclamation i didn't catch that so let's try it again we can add that okay we can add that now and if you try to add an empty input then it brings up gracefully all inputs if i try to fill one okay fantastic if i try to fill two that the third one okay and if i fill the third one fantastic there we go now this is working correctly this is working correctly and we can delete our items and so on and so forth so this is much better for error handling and then the final thing that i do want to do is i want to go into app.js and i want to remove all these default state values and i want to change this back to false so that by default it's our form that is going to show so let's remove this oops Let's remove this. Let's remove this and this. Oops. And then let's remove this. And this as well. And that should be fine. So our form should be empty. Okay, fantastic. Our form should be empty and we should have this. Now, I've just realized this. I didn't even catch this. But if you try to print download from here, then nothing is going to work. Okay, nothing is going to work. And actually, it should throw an error. So it, it throws us this error in the console, which means it's not going to be able to print, right? But if we go into our preview inverse, then we can print on this and so on and so forth. Now, technically, this seems a bit empty, right? It seems a bit empty. So should I leave the other items inside? Mm. I'm not sure. So this is exactly the reason why I wanted to display the inverse on the left, our inverse form on the left, and then our preview inverse on the right. So this is this is exactly the reason why I wanted to do that. So I think I'm going to do that to do that in the next video. But before we end, then let me just remove this button from here. And this button, I'm going to grab it from here. Where is it? I'm going to grab it from here and I'm going to place it inside our conditional. Should be inside this conditional and it should be inside our our fragment. Okay, so let me just save this to see whether it's going to bring some issues. Let's see preview invoice. And it has this and this, which means I don't need this. Do I need this margin bottom on the button? Let's see, let me move it. There we go. So this is much better. Okay, fantastic. And the reason why this is more to the inside than this is because our heading is taking the padding from the div, which is this div right here, as well as the padding from the main element. Okay. So in order to fix this, just to push this button inwards, then I'm going to say margin left of five. Push it inwards right here. There we go. So I'm not saying padding left because padding, let me show you what padding is going to do. Just playing around with CSS. So this is what padding is going to do. So it's going to have padding on the left of five and it really doesn't push it in one so it's better to have margin left of five and there we go okay fantastic so that is going to be it for this video and in the next video we're going to just work on displaying this to the left and then our inverse to the right and then i also designed a landing page for this application and we're going to probably build it in the next video as well so thank you guys for watching and if you're not subscribed then please subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video Bye bye